I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. You guys love to tell me what I thought about this AOC versus Marjorie Taylor Green thing, but to me, I woke up this morning. I'm like, it seemed like when I went to bed last night, everyone was talking about Palestine, and now everyone is talking about this. Seems a little bit, seems a little bit suspicious. But you know me, I'm a little bit conspiratorial. Anyway, uh, did you have any initial thoughts about uh, this whole latest, you know, explosion with Marjorie Taylor Greene, who just continues to be the probably the biggest distraction for the mainstream media to everything that's actually wrong with our country right now? Yeah, um, I had like my thoughts about her when she was running. I do have friends that that live in her district, um, so I was concerned about her. She said like her main goal and mission was to go after the squad. And that's exactly mm -hmm. what she's doing. I mean, Corey Bush had to move her office because she was yeah. afraid of her. Um, now she's going after AOC. So like none of this surprises me. And like, I'm not a psychiatrist or anything, but she seems to have some type of obsessive behavior. She's like obsessed with the squad. She's obsessed with Antifa. She's still talking about Antifa. She's um, obsessed with Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. um, she's just not willing to let it go. And she's done some things that are kind of dangerous. Like I still remember she had that campaign ad where she had the gun in her hand and she said, <laughs> if Antifa shows up here, I'll have a surprise for them. Was so, it the same like, ad where she shot the Green New Deal? Yeah. So, I mean, like she, they knew what they were getting, you know, when she came in, I'm still shocked people voted for her. To begin well, with, actually, her opponent dropped out, so she basically won the race. Yeah, that was fucked up. Off. I remember that. It was a, basically a shoe in for her. There, the Democrats yeah. didn't give they, and, and this is why the, it, this breeds conspiracy amongst the Democratic Party, right? That they love to have somebody like Marjorie Taylor Greene. They didn't even run in opposition to her. So well, I think apparently, she got disqualified on like a technicality, if I'm not mistaken. I, he actually, he dropped out, and, and some people have said that you know some of the real radical supporters of Marjorie Taylor Greene were like sending the dude like a ton of hate mail, death threats, mm -hmm. threatening his family, stuff like that. So it, it is possible that she kind of had the lane cleared for herself just via that insane harassment. They, wouldn't, they didn't run to anybody else. I'm not sure. I don't think it, maybe it was because they couldn't. I think it was past the deadline by the yeah. time that guy dropped out, mm -hmm. but it is crazy that she literally just walked into Congress. Yeah. yeah. I think that, Oh, go ahead, Sabrina. Oh no. I was just going to say, yeah, like she's like, she's loony. And, and if something happens and not to say, you know, God forbid something does, but if something happens like with her, you know, Congress can't be like, oh, well, we didn't see this coming. No, you saw it coming. Yeah. No, yeah. I agree with I that. I agree that, with that. She seems yeah. unhinged. Yeah. But th my other thing about Sabrina or I said Sabrina. Oh, my God. My other thing, Sabrina, about Marjorie Taylor Greene. God, I can't even fucking talk today. Um, my, other, my big thing about Marjorie Taylor Greene is that I almost feel like she is just a distraction, right? Like she's one of the least powerful people in Congress and yet she dominates a, a, so much of the media cycle. And I almost think she's successfully rep replicating this like, m like micro Trumpian effect essentially. Right. So yeah, um, she's well, she just, is, but I, I, I mean, I totally agree with that, but I also think that um, the, the, I also agree with Sabrina that she should be, uh, ejected essentially from Congress because I mean right now you're, you're right she's playing into the media and they're playing into what she wants but that shouldn't be you know continued to be sanctioned necessarily I, I don't think you should uh, be you know expected to go into a workplace where someone harasses you yells at you stalks you um, abuses you uh, you know like regardless of who's involved regardless of how powerful everyone in this situation is you know regardless of our criticisms of the squad members uh, i do genuinely think that what marjorie uh has done in this latest instance would qualify as harassment and stalking um and you know it is it is it is pretty um it, it is dangerous I, I don't know the right word necessarily um but i don't think it's the right kind of culture you want to be uh, necessarily. No, I'm not defending Marjorie. I know, I know you're not. Yeah, and I, 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 mean, I started off by saying that it was a distraction. I completely agree no, with that. I, yeah, and I echo the sentiment that these people shouldn't have to live in constant fear or, or whatever. I, that, that's that's clear to me. But I do. My critique is more of the media and how Marjorie Taylor Greene is treated as if she has so much more powerful as a rising threat in the Republican Party, as if she's you know representing this new wave. When really, I just think that she's all that's left from that 30 percent of the Trump wing and now she is with now that trump's not in power that this is where a lot of that focus is going now and so i feel like why would aoc even decide to like i mean obviously she's forcing aoc to engage with her in this instance but i feel like it's almost the best thing to do to just ignore somebody well, like that's what is doing. yeah yeah that's no what she's doing 
and and I think that the media, which obviously they won't do, would just be better served to like starve. Like, you know, what's it when you uh, put a blanket over a flame, you um, starve it of oxygen. It out. Yeah, and I just think that that's the lesson that we should have taken away from Trump. Um, is the fact that somebody like this is just there to, you know, like you said, Gavin, keep our eye away from Palestine, keep our eye away from demanding that Joe Biden give us health care, keep our eye away from the fact that she's not the real reason we don't have the Green New Deal. I don't care, it, you know, that, yeah, she's provocative and she's dumb and she's problematic. And yeah, she's crossed too many lines to be a considered a reasonable Congress congressional representative. But at the end of the day, she's not the reason we don't have the things that we want. Yeah, 100%. Right. And even yeah. on The View, like they're talking about the January attacks. They're still talking about that, like on The View. Yeah. Anything to like get our attention away from Biden and the fact that he's not doing what he said he was going to do. Yeah. 100%. yeah. So do you do you think that she should have been expelled, Sabrina, when the January 6th riot went down? Because a lot of people were calling for that, including um, Cori Bush and, and the squad. Um, or do you think that they should have, you know, waited for something like this to happen where it's like, all right, this is clearly, you know, unprofessional, borderline criminal behavior uh it's your time is up when, when you think is the appropriate time because it, it is a tough question i don't want to i don't want to be the kind of person that's just like oh this person this elected representative is not acting like i would therefore they're out of power you know i, I don't like to set that precedent either so it is an interesting nuanced issue but I, i'm wondering where you think the line should be drawn well she another thing that she did is she attacked um a protester in dc too like she went up to a protester there was a kid like a teenager oh was it and david she, hogg you're talking about that incident yeah so it's just like i mean she should have been gone i don't know why she's still there she's obviously not improving her behavior um but again it, i i just feel like she's a distraction right now yeah generally yeah. i would agree with that um and also you know she's obviously trying to to, uh, to bait sorry aoc into this debate regarding mm -hmm. the green new deal um I, I do think that that would be a waste of time. We've talked about it on the show a little bit. I do not think that would be productive. I don't think it's really even worth sanctioning debates with people that don't believe in um, climate change. You know, it's a fact of science. It's a fact of reality. You know, it's not like, I mean, you might as well debate someone on gravity, right? Well, not uh, Ken Ham all over again. Yeah, that's what I said when we originally broke it down. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but I don't think that's a good use of AOC's time. And I'm really hoping that, uh, she doesn't take that bait, you know, uh, but also I do think that it would be interesting to see Marjorie Taylor Greene exposed in some sense, you know, if, if anyone is going to destroy her ideology, hopefully someone can do it. That's maybe a little bit more, um, or has more time on their hands than an elective representative, you know, that's supposed to be passing laws and stuff like that. I don't know. It's a tough question because like, you know, she is a popular figure and, and despite the fact that, um, you know, she is obviously massively over focused on by the media. It is true that, you know, in some sense, she is more representative of your average American Republican than a lot of her colleagues in the House. You know, these elitist Republicans uh, that, you know, are, are more like the Mitt Romney styling. So, you know, it's interesting for a number of reasons, because a Marjorie Taylor Greene is usually the, the kind of voter that those elitist Republicans are, you know, dog whistling to and signaling to to get them to vote for them, uh, not the kind of people that actually make it into power. Again, she's not really fitting into the mold of your typical elitist Republican. Yeah, well, you make a really good point there, Gavin. And I think that the the most stark thing about this is how differently the media treats somebody like Liz Cheney than somebody than Marjorie Taylor Greene. They are equally as bad, guys. And yep. Liz Cheney probably worse because she has more insti like um, more uh, institutional backing from like high levels of fundraising. I don't know what mm -hmm. kind of fundraising numbers uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene does, but I would imagine that they pale to the, you know, big time money access that Liz Cheney has. And of course, she was just removed from her seats, but now she's getting all this fawning coverage from even like liberal media outlets as if she's some kind of like resistance queen because she's refused to uh you know fall in line when the republican party told her so but i just think that the most revealing thing about all of this is how the the media treats the two of them completely differently when they stand for i would say probably 95 percent of the same things agreed but she she's corporate though so they're they're gonna defend her um right yeah and yeah, then exactly. it's yeah. And I think that this is the kind of and that's what gives and, and honestly, I think the, the difference in treatment between Liz Cheney and Marjorie Taylor Greene to Marjorie's base gives her power also mm -hmm. from the you know what I mean? The more that the the more that the liberals shower Liz Cheney with affection and 
um, media coverage and fawn over her, the more it empowers somebody like uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene among their base because she's going to ex like expel those people from the party, uh, those people who are standing against this authentic message of, of, of Republican values, new conservative, whatever the alt right, whatever the fuck they call themselves now, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but this new kind of vision that they have, this Trumpian vision, where uh, the, the most fundamental aspect of Trump is that he made his class about, uh, you know, your character and your taste. Mm. Like, oh, if you're rich, are you going to order, you know, a one million Big Macs or are you going to eat caviar? Right. He's going to, you know, buy a million Big Macs and shit on a gold toilet, just like somebody who's poor imagines that they would be when they were rich. That's kind of like one of the big things that Matt Taibbi pointed out. And I think that Marjorie Taylor Greene kind of takes that and, and puts like a working class, like woman of the woods kind of. She inverts it. it. Yeah. No, I think that's very accurate. And, and honestly, she's just such an interesting character because, because mostly, like I said, when you see these Republicans talking about a lot of these issues, they're, they're really just kind of dog whistling. They're really just kind of like, you know, they don't really give that much of a fuck about this stuff, but Marjorie Taylor green, if, if you can tell, she really, cares about this stuff she really believes what she's saying she's not just trying to get well, elected, she's brainwashed you know? herself but it, like, to a like m extent of mental illness like she like you said sabrina she's literally obsessive about some of this stuff like it, it's clearly what she's thinking about you know it's not like she just says shit to get elected and then you know goes and governs like the rest of them no she's taking these values in a very literal way into the congress you know she's literally you know tracking down and, and stalking her fellow representatives and being like yo like, I want to talk to you about this shit. Come on. Like, I want to talk about Antifa and all this. Shit. Like, it's crazy. It's not a l behavior that you see from any other person in Congress. And I just think it's interesting. And uh, I mean, admittedly, you know, like you said, they are covering it way too much. But, you know, she's giving them lots to work with. Yeah. Yeah. And there's something to be said for AOC, too. Like, she's I'm not the biggest fan of her anymore. Um, no, no. But no, who can blame you? <laughs> yeah. Like she, you know, some things I think she should just keep to herself. Uh, there was another incident. I think it was like a year ago. I don't remember the guy's name. It was another politician. And there was that whole issue where he called her a bitch. Oh, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, remember that? I yeah, can't remember who the fuck that was. I'm terrible at that kind of thing. But yeah, I do remember that that was a spat that occurred in the media cycle. It was it was Ted Yoho. He was on there. We go. Out. Gavin's amazing at that kind of thing. So that's why <laughs> <laughs> he, was on, he was on his way out of Congress in Florida, I believe, which yeah. is probably why he felt emboldened. Uh, to to make that statement, but yeah, it, it is. Uh, sorry, were you were you making a point with that though, Sabrina? Yeah, it's just like she doesn't need to like every time somebody. I mean, you guys know this. Like you do like leftist commentary. I'm sure sometimes you get like you know responses, or if you're on Twitter, you get like tweets or responses to you that are you may not feel are appropriate or whatever. But mm -hmm. do you go and like are broadcast you know that every and I time? Are closet lovers. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> <laughs> i mean imagine if every time someone did that to you you went and you broadcast and said this person said this to me this person did this to me it's like i don't know sometimes i feel like aoc wants attention no that oh, is dude, a good she does want attention well that is that's a good point you. too that's her. <laughs> especially, because, especially because her origin story that you know she used to talk about all the time was that i'm a working class woman i'm a bartender and stuff like you probably heard a lot more nasty shit let's be honest mm -hmm. at the bar than what ted yoho said to you or whatever so like you know I do kind of, I, I do kind of see what you're saying. Yeah, it just does. I, I, I mean, like, obviously, kind of like going back to what we said, right? Nobody should have to work in an environment where they get right. called nasty things at all. And I don't want to be a simp for whoever this Ted Yoho guy was. Fuck him. But <laughs> you know, obviously, you shouldn't call a woman a bitch regardless of the situation you're in. However, it, what is that on the scale of suffering when you're a politician yeah. and you're in charge of, you know, in that, like making these broad scale yeah. decisions, right? When you're you know, I'm sorry, I'm not as worked up about that as when you gave word salad answer about the suffering of the Palestinians. Exactly. And if anything, she should take these opportunities, you know, when the media decides to obsessively focus, for example, on Ted Yoho calling her a bitch, you know, she should take that opportunity to go on television for the first 10 seconds, say, you know, this was unacceptable. And obviously, Ted Yoho should be called out and misogyny is not acceptable in the workplace. But then for the you know rest of the five minutes she has on TV, why not spend that time talking about why we need Medicare for all? Or why not spend that time talking about you know how the u.s is enabling the genocide and ethnic cleansing going on in palestine you know you know if you're on tv th that's certainly what i would be talking about if i had five minutes on national television Mama Pelosi not, would say mm -hmm. no exactly yeah but <laughs> so I, I think it's definitely an interesting uh you know discussion to have um but ultimately uh, i just think it's i just think it's funny how this continually uh is happening seemingly with no 
resolution. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene just like going around like a complete like cracked out lunatic through the you know streets of D.C., the halls of Congress. Um, you know, just being a you crazy wish woman. That we had a cracked out lunatic on the left, though. I kind of do. I, I kind of do. We had a cracked out lunatic. You know, it's like, damn, we don't even have a cracked out lunatic that will yeah. go out on the fucking right. Well, and that's, and and that's kind of what I was saying. Like, you can tell that AOC, like, she kind like, you know, what I was saying, like, how Marjorie Taylor Greene really believes this stuff. Like, let's be honest, to an extent, AOC, it kind of seems like after a year or two in Congress, after three years in Congress, some of these really intensely held beliefs, like abolishing ICE, for example, they've kind of faded. They kind of receded uh, as far as what takes priority when she opens her mouth um but marjorie taylor green that clearly hasn't happened like i said she really still believes this stuff she really makes it central to her identity in a way that aoc has not made for example abolishing ice or even a green new deal uh central to her identity in 2021 under the bush or the biden administration so you know i, I think that if anything we could learn from Marjorie Taylor Greene, which we really shouldn't probably be learning anything from her. But if we should learn anything, it's to, you know, wear your values proudly. You know, no one, no one is, no one is confused about what Marjorie Taylor Greene stands for. Marjorie Taylor right. Greene brings a motherfucking ruckus. And that's exactly what the left <laughs> needs to do. Sorry, we were talking about Wu-Tang earlier. Yeah. <laughs>